Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Rule of Waves 3 as Japan. It has been a while since the last part. I do apologize for that. I've been fairly busy with work for the most part. Um, but uh, we're back, hopefully now with less interruptions. Before we begin, I do want to go ahead and mention one thing. So YouTube several months back announced that they were changing some of the requirements for being part of the YouTube Partner Program. Um, those changes finally got around to being rolled out to the channel now and so the channel now does qualify again for the youtube partner program um it had previously lost it the last time youtube changed the requirements because the channel didn't quite meet the requirements on um i think it was the number of like hours viewed in the past 12 months or something like that uh the channel still does not get any ad revenue but the channel does qualify for uh memberships and super chats so those now do exist on the channel i went ahead and joined back up we have those now so if you wish to support the channel financially and you do not wish to like create a patreon account or something um you can support the channel on a monthly basis via youtube membership um i decided i'm just going to keep it simple we're just going to have a single tier um at four ninety nine a month. So yep, there we go. So that's the equivalent of the highest tier of support on Patreon for a penny cheaper, because Patreon's actually five dollars a month. Um but it's effectively gonna be treated the same as if you were to support the channel via Patreon. Um but nonetheless Let's go ahead and hop back into the game. So we are in our, if memory serves me correctly, third war with France. And I believe I mentioned last part as well. This is like the second or third war that we have had with Russia as well. Uh, I didn't bother going back and checking to see which war this is with Russia because I don't actually care that much. And now, though, I guess technically I could check this looking in the history. We had a war in 1899 oh so this would only be the second war against them i guess okay for some reason i felt like i fought more wars with russia i i really did but no this would actually only yeah this is only the second okay that, i mean that's perfectly fine with me um now where are we we are the red here we are actually a little bit lower in terms of fleet tonnage compared to Russia, um, and then a fair bit more less than France. Luckily, we do have our good friend Italy, who is sort of tied with France, backing us up. Uh, when it comes to the economy, we look to be on par with France, and we are ahead of Russia. Russia's this little, like, magenta color here. Uh, so, quick look at ship's loss. and I mean, to be honest, I think we're doing great. Generally, I mean, could we be doing better? Probably. But I think we're doing great, generally speaking. We've lost four pre-dreadnoughts. And I believe this one, yeah... This tab is just the entire game. Uh, four pre-dreadnoughts, while the British have lost 15, along with one dreadnought. The French have lost five and one dreadnought. 14 pre-dreadnoughts for Russia. We go through heavy cruisers like there's no tomorrow. We, we, <laughs> we're the leader on that one. That's not exactly great, honestly. Um, now, one thing I'm going to say is maybe we should probably kick more of our intel focus into Russia because they're presumably the one we'll be fighting the most. Um, will France bring some stuff over? Probably. But the vast majority of our combat should likely be against the Russians because they have a base here in Northeast Alaska, or not Northeast Alaska, <laughs> Northeast Asia uh, that we don't have the ability to remove because it is considered a home area. So... Yeah, we just kind of have to sit there and deal with them constantly being a thorn in our side.
Now this is a sizable fleet that they have brought. So we'll see how this goes. Um, attack enemy ships in general. What do we have? We have... Okay, well, the game had me thinking we were going to get a big fight, but nope, it's going to be a tiny fight. We have a Yakimo heavy cruiser and a Nitaka light cruiser, as well as a handful of destroyers as escorts. But of course, annoyingly, we're going to be fighting this at night, which I hate because we can't see shit. I don't like night fights until I have radar. I really, really do not like night fights until I have radar. And particularly, I don't like them until I have the ability to fire at radar targets. Should quantify that, or qualify that. Qualify, I believe, is the word I'm looking for, actually, in this case. I, I don't want to be dealing with, I can't see you, and I if I do see you, I can't engage you unless I close into freaking well within torpedo range. I'm not big on that. I really don't like it. I absolutely hate it, so it's annoying that we got a night fight. I really hate them. And, I mean, I realize they're realistic. There are things that happen historically. It doesn't mean that I enjoy fighting them, however. Okay, do you have destroyers that are actually... No, these destroyers are theoretically faster than you. They're just, for some reason, stuck behind you. And I don't quite know why. Now, there's a halfway decent chance that we don't run into them. Um, I mean, th theoretically, if I sailed up here, we could probably run into something. It would probably just be, you know, transports and shit, but it would be something to shoot at at least. But it would get us into bomber range it looks like new torpedo bomber range which is actually not fun well, we'd have a couple of hours to maybe try to get in and out real quick i suppose we can try that see if we can get in there sink a couple of transports and then probably head east Um, uh, Achotka, I want to say east is probably the fastest way out of aircraft range. Oh, no, never mind. We're just good. No, no, we're not going to continue searching. Oh, they headed south, way, way south. Damn. Oh, shit. They had CVLs. Oh, those would have been fun to destroy. I don't know why they went south, though. Okay, they started here. There was absolutely zero chance that if I moved along the normal heading that we were going at game start, that we would have ever impacted them. Or, you know, spotted them. There was no way. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Better luck next time. Kuma has been brought in. Working on the problems of more powerful compressed air ejection. But so far, success eludes them. And the rebels in Guantanamo Bay have defeated the Spanish forces. Guantanamo is independent. Jesus, they sunk a whole bunch of our destroyers. Or not destroyers, uh, submarines. Um, I need more... Uh, sub hunters. We're just gonna, I think, 
build those 1920 design ones because it's a little bit faster than trying to build new ones. Well, design new ones and get them out, especially since I don't think it's going to really make a difference anyway. I also, oh, we're being blockaded, really. Really, we're being blockaded. I suppose, okay, sure. Um, Shikashima's active fleet you. And I think that should break the blockade. I think. New fight. Cruiser action. They declined. Convoy attack. This one they accept, because of course they do. I would prefer the cruiser action. Uh, attack enemy ships in general. Well. So, attack enemy ships near the objective depends a little bit on where the convoy is. And it might be better. But you know what? No. We'll just stick with the standard attack enemy ships in general. And okay, we're doing this at night. Which actually I'm I'm a little bit more inclined to say I'm fine with this one at night. Especially if we're going to be doing this right inside of torpedo bomber range. And already spotted something. And we're going to turn off because those are probably warships. And by warships, I mean destroyers. And I do not wish to be anywhere close to destroyers. Oh shit. We're going to get torpedoed. These are not good. Okay, now these are sh the Chiotas, which I'm pretty sure are a very, very old design. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're a very old design. It is uh, 1930. These are 40-year-old ships. Um, yeah, they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle. They can do the job against destroyers outside of the fact that they can't really catch up to them when it comes to modern destroyers. I would really prefer for my destroyers to... You know what? Fuck it. We're going to break my destroyers off. Don't screen. You don't need to screen. Hunt down their destroyers and we'll have the light cruisers, I think, go for the... Uh, transports, which are somewhere up there. Uh, never mind, found the transports. They are not where I was expecting them to be. Uh, that is a lot of stuff, guys. That is a lot more stuff than I anticipated. God damn, they are hurting our destroyers. How old are these uh, Moshizukis? Uh, they are about 10 years old. Okay. They are, they're taking a pounding and it, they're not having a fun time. Luckily, I think we have probably dealt with the 
escorts. And what's left is just the transports. Uh, that should have also been mission completed now, right? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, well, yeah, okay, only one has actually sunk, so that makes sense. Uh, see if we can find the rest of the transports, because I think a few of them managed to sneak off. Sail this way. Towards the objective marker. So I'm going to actually tell you guys, I think, to go into a screen formation to hopefully increase the chance of spotting any transports that are attempting to escape. Okay, that one's dead in the water. And there are a few more. Do you guys have torpedoes? You do. Okay, good. Uh, Moshizuki, I think I'm going to tell you to break off because you are really beat up. So you're going to go ahead and sail for uh, Noshiro. Sure, all these guys should be counting, but oh, okay, never mind. We did get the okay. I completely missed it. We probably had the okay the last time I looked, and I just was not paying any attention. Let's go ahead and make sure these guys all sink. You know what? I think you guys can probably go to cruising speed just to maximize time on target. guys fire a torpedo at him if you... Oh, not on the correct firing arc. Okay. That's fine. Um, you can turn around instead then. And then you can launch a torpedo at him. There you go. That was the worst firing angle you could have used. And that's my fault for not telling you to not do it that way. I really should have told you to hold your fire, and I would fire it for you. I just kind of thought you could do a little bit better than that. That was clearly wishful thinking on my part. Holy shit, medium hits. Were those 5-inch guns? Yeah, 5-inch guns, okay. Um, are you guys going to identify this guy? Because, I mean... You, you could shoot him. We're indicating that this is not a wreck yet. We're just apparently not going to shoot at it, I guess. Okay, sure, whatever. Might just be the game bugging out or something, because that's not showing a wreck. But we're not firing at it. We're also not identifying it in any capacity. Maybe our theory is, oh, we'll, we'll board it and steal the supplies. I got... That's my best guess as to what their plan is for why we're not firing on it. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm going to say this is probably about as good as we're going to get. So let's just go ahead and start heading home. We sunk most, if not all, the transports that were right here. I guess we can confirm that later. Well, we got a fair few subs out here that maybe would have spotted something, hopefully. So I think we're going to safely say that we sunk them all.
I mean, we could have hung around for a bit longer if we wanted to, but we've got a few hours until the sun's up, and I don't really want to go too deep in at this point. Because torpedo bombers would absolutely ruin our day. 14 heavy AA factor does not do a whole hell of a lot of good. It really doesn't. Go. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. They had one transport still alive. We sunk two destroyers. They had two more that were lightly damaged. Oh, they were still pretty damn close to us, actually. What the hell kind of path was that? Well, that's why we didn't find him, because I would, never would have expected them to take this weird roundabout path that they did when we lost contact with them right around here-ish, where we sunk most of these other ones. So we could have actually finished off their entire fleet if I had, you know, gone... The reality is, I don't think we would have, actually. Because, I, again, I never would have expected them to take some weird-ass path like this. So I would have never thought, okay, well, let's try to, like, I don't know, what is this, a wing? Draw a wing? Really? Or a feather? Some knockoff the Batman symbol? Well, that should break the blockade if it wasn't already broken. Uh, only the Navy can win this war. I need the money. Deck park. Potentially helpful. Let's see. They're doing quite a bit better when it comes to the whole VP from the trade war thing. Which I'm not fully certain as to why, if I'm being honest. It must just, it must just be because of the raiders is the only thing that makes sense. Because we're, we're doing better when it comes to subs. Good job, Italy. You, you keep the, the French distracted in the Mediterranean. You keep doing a good job there. What, what do the French have there? You know? Italy? I feel like you should probably be doing better. I really do. The French have eight dreadnoughts, eight battle cruisers, a single heavy cruiser, nine CLs, three CVLs, five... Um, Seaplane carriers, 58 destroyers, 5 corvettes, and 16 subs. Well, well, and Russia throws in a dreadnought, a seaplane carrier, and 4 subs. Italy, however, has 11 dreadnoughts, 7 battle cruisers, an armored cruiser. Why do you only have one armored cruiser? What the hell happened to your armored cruiser fleet, Italy? Do you have it somewhere else? Please tell me you don't have it somewhere else, because there's no reason for it to be anywhere else but the Mediterranean. The only things that should be in the colonies is, like, light cruisers for the most part, really. Because you don't have tons of basing rights. What the hell are you doing, Italy? Italy, where? Oh, you only have one? Oh, my God. What did you do to all your armored cruisers? That you only have the one in service. And two more. That are. Like. A year out. I say a year because theoretically. The San Marco should have probably been out last year. Was our estimate. But that estimate is clearly wrong. I don't know what the hell they're doing.
okay, well, we broke this, the uh, blockade in Northeast Asia, so they're not punishing us there. We technically actually outmatch them here, but we do not have the ability to blockade them just yet. Uh, we would need to do quite a bit more and maybe have Italy assist us a bit better, but Italy's got bigger things to deal with, so I'm not going to fault them. Uh, let's check relations. How likely is it that somebody else will go to war with France and or Russia? Uh, not very likely. Not very likely at all. Well, that's not true. <laughs> so France and Germany are at nine. If France and Germany go to war, we would basically get the Axis powers in 1930, which is a tad bit early. Also, it'd be the Axis powers with a, quite a bit less fascism, so not necessarily a bad thing, potentially, for us. Um, I mean, I wouldn't complain, honestly, if we got in alliance with Germany. Germany's not a terrible ally. They have four times as many dreadnoughts as we do, but then again, they have an actual economy. We don't. Um, yeah, Japan really has issues until like the 30s when their economy really picks up. Uh, admittedly, we've already done a lot of the stuff that to an extent sort of contributed to that. The whole conquering of China stuff basically is a fairly major contributing factor to that. Uh, same with, you know, Korea and whatnot. We already did that ages ago, but we don't really get the benefits of it realistically so much until like the 30s oh battleship engagement ooh, ooh. not looking forward to that and it's an unexpected engagement as well please be closer to my territories than theirs of course it's closer to their territories and it's with daybreak coming which oh my God, I want to leave. <laughs> so we can fight them. We're going to be dealing with torpedo bombers launched from Vladivostok and Nachotka. Neither of which I'm particularly looking forward to. This is actually a rare case where I would have almost preferred a night battle. Um, I can't say I'm too surprised that we're going to be fighting it closer to their ter territory than ours. Um, ours, look at all these overlaps of freaking torpedo and medium bombers. They're not going to have a fun time if they fought near our coastline. So I don't fault them for staying close to their ports. But it does mean we get an annoying fight now. So we're going to need to rely on quite a bit more cap. Uh, than usual. I say that because we don't usually rely on cap like at all, but we're going to have to. So let's go ahead and uh, probably request this on the dreadnoughts. Uh, they are generally the most important assets that we have, in my opinion. Um, you're going to stick close to the Zuio. Uh, Zuio, do I have you focus on scouting or do I? Well, first things first, we're going to reorganize your search pattern because that is way too big of a search pattern they're probably in there we could probably even go a little bit tighter but i'll be generous and say let's not do that they might be a little bit further south i don't think they are though really but we'll see also you don't need to search out 300 i assume that's nautical miles but I don't know for certain because it doesn't actually say. Search out to about... The reality is 170 encompasses the area in question. Uh, you know what? I'll open it up just a little bit on the left. But I don't think it should be needed, really. I really do think 308 is just fine. But we'll open it to 298 just on the off chance they sail a bit south. Um, now, I'm pretty sure some of you guys should have your own scout planes, right? Yes, okay. Those will help as well.
Okay, we're going to need to try to probably do a quick in and out here. Uh, get in, destroy their fleet very quickly, and then get the hell out of here uh, before they have an opportunity to really hurt us. Uh, luckily, we have a lot of our armored cruisers up here, and our armored cruisers aren't bad. We got the... How old are the Miyokos? I feel like they're a bit of an older design. Like, not brand new. Okay. Mid-20s. Okay. Yeah, I can... I'm fine with that. Those are pretty good. Wait, is that right? That doesn't seem right. Okay, so the class design is from the 20s. It's from 1920, but we didn't get them until the mid-1920s and we finally actually built them. Okay, yep, that's fine. Uh, we got two of them. Uh, we have an Asao here, which I'm not a big fan of having grouped up, or excuse me, in a Wate. I'm not a big fan of having that grouped up with the Miyokos, because it does slow them down. These are the Nishans, which are even older, I'm pretty sure. Um, 1910s. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, see how this goes. Where are you guys scouting? Uh, well, who, that scout is an idiot. They're not going to be that far south. I can pretty much guarantee you that. But they're not going to be south at all, actually, is more accurate. Okay, we have spotted something. This is presumably their forward line and not the actual combat line. Or, you know, battle line, rather. Um, we still don't really want to be there, however, so we're going to turn away with the light cruisers, and we'll have the heavy cruisers start sailing towards them. The main thing I want to find is their battle line, so we can launch a... Oh, shit. Okay, well, apparently... <laughs> okay, they're closer than we expected. Much much closer than we expected. Okay, you launched all six torpedoes. Break. And hopefully those hit. Uh, it didn't hit the one I really wanted you to go for, but it did hit somebody, so it does still count. Um, also did not hit the one that I really wanted you to go for, but again, it did hit somebody at least, which is nice, and this is a nice easy way to just lose all of our light cruisers, I guess. Well. Um, everybody pop smoke. I want yeah, I want you guys to fire. Go go ahead fire. Three more torpedoes in the Gangut, which is not a particularly great design. That one's dead in the water. Eesh. Uh Nishin is not having a fun time. It got torpedoed. And it can't turn. Taka took a torpedo. Um, now, where did their line go again? 
There they are. God damn. Yeah, we're just going to lose all of our light cruisers here, but um, I, whatever, I guess. <laughs> I see a seaplane carrier up there. Another seaplane carrier over there as well. I don't know who fired that torpedo, but I think they're an idiot. Now, are these... Those are a little bit nicer than the Gangut, uh, not by much. I think I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to want to launch torpedoes at them. That's not the one I want. That's the one I want. Focus on BBs. Grab the torpedo bombers. Um, yep, that's fine. Ready a strike. Trying to get up there, but it's going to be a little while. Uh, they are well within torpedo or, uh, torpedo bomber range. I would like to have somebody keep an eye on them if possible. Uh, okay, Nishin just got nuked. I'm going to try to have you escape, but good luck. Uh, there's the battle cruisers that they brought. You know, honestly, so long as we sink a whole bunch of their dreadnoughts, I am... I will live with the loss of our light cruiser fleet. Damn, you got a lucky torpedo hit there, buddy. I am frankly shocked that you managed to land a hit. Yes, yeah, so we'll have the kamikaze chase after the a uh, seaplane carrier. It's definitely not because it's named the Kamikaze. I'll hit you with a torpedo. You turn north. You guys also turn north. Um, you guys aren't going the full speed that you could. Do you still have torpedo? No, you don't have any torpedoes. What about you? Nope. You, you do, but I don't think you have the ability to fire on anything. Nope, okay. Frutaka. Shoot. So our dreadnoughts are faster than theirs. But the game really does chug when you're doing these big battles. Um, we're also not significantly faster. We are just like one knot faster. Wonderful. Uh, select all that are ready. Launch strike. Sure, we'll try to do a coordinated strike.
Uh, no. Satsu's going to break off. And uh, you're going to try to go after him still. Those destroyers are going to focus on trying to get that seaplane carrier. Not because a seaplane carrier is really a particularly big prize. It's just... Why not? Okay, Furtaka is going to attempt to swing to the west and then go north again to link up with the Kunigasa, which is also going to attempt to turn south because it's not really going to do a great job going headlong towards Dreadnoughts. Enemy battlecruisers heading south. I really need that destroyer to sink because I'm pretty sure it's contributing to the game chugging along because it's just throwing up so much freaking smoke. Okay, you took a hit. You're going to try to escape south, but good luck because you are stuck between two different. Okay, you took a... 15 inch shell, didn't you? Yes, you did. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. That guy is dead. There is literally no reason for you to be shooting at him. It does you zero good to waste your shots on him. There's anyone you should be firing at. It's those guys out ahead of you, but they're outside of your sight range, so you're not able to actually target them right now. Kinagasa is going to sink because of the fire. There we go. There we go. Now you can actually shoot. Now, where the hell's the, uh, there they are. They are ever so slowly making their way up here. Forgot, we don't have jets yet, so they're not that fast. Really? You think 25 knots is high speed? Okay, sure. If you say so, I guess. You guys went for the wrong target. I can already tell you that. Um, and again, you're going for the wrong target. Oh, five inch hit. 
Five inches don't count. I want to see a 14 inch hit. Like 10 inch hits, which I mean, sure, but those aren't really going to do much because I don't think we can pen their belt. And I don't think those are hitting the deck either. You have an 11 inch belt, and for us to have any hope of penning that, we would need to close to less than a thousand. And there's no way in hell I'm closing to less than a thousand fucking meters. Four inch hit, again, I want a 14. Give me a 14 inch hit. Kako's not having a great time. Oh, fuck me. Kashima took a torpedo hit. And is not having a fun time, and now is going to be slow enough that they can close the distance with us. And maybe this time you don't get distracted by a destroyer. Okay, we landed a 14-inch ship, but I don't think it did a whole lot of damage. They are really getting in close to us. Oh, you don't have any... Anybody have torpedoes still? You guys have torpedoes. Time for the only way to reliably kill a Dreadnought. Okay, now you guys break off. Uh, select all that are ready. Make sure we're choosing the right one. Launch strike, go. Let's see if we can give a little bit of chase. Of course, it's going to be... Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you guys. I think you guys can probably come back now. Sorry, I forgot about you. I don't know if you guys actually sunk that... Uh, seaplane carrier. Probably not. Oh. Um, also, I think for now, you guys can probably stop with the whole search stuff. I don't think you really need it anymore. So 
Maybe we're just going to say, let's get the hell out of here. This is going to be a common issue that we're going to have fighting Russia in the future is just because this is going to get worse and worse as time goes on, basically. It's, it looks like, oh, yep, yeah, okay, we got a torpedo hit. Uh, granted, I don't know if, you know, with what we actually hit. Ooh, two more hits. Good. No, you guys don't need to do any scouting. We just want to get the hell out of here now at this point. That's kind of the reason why. So we're just gonna we're gonna leave. If for some reason they decide to leave the safety of their torpedo bomber bubble, which I don't see them doing, especially since they turned away from us. Kako, I think you can slow down now. Now, technically, could we have kept fighting? Technically, yes. We have our carrier. It could attempt to continue. To launch torpedo bombers, um, but we don't really have a good way of scout of getting eyes on the enemy, so it's not really that good of a strategy. I mean, theoretically, I could hang out like right at the edge of their range. So we sunk one dreadnought, heavily damaged two more, lightly damaged two others. Sunk a CL. Yeah, God, this was not particularly great, honestly. Submarine. Bulbous bow. Bow. Deuces. Engine horsepower requirements. New Italian medium bomber. I don't have the money to build the Takao, and also, technically, I probably should have done a rebuild. You know, if we had gotten the Shikoshimas in there, I probably would have been a little bit more inclined to hang around, because they're old. I don't really care too much if we lose them. Um, but they have the benefit of being able to sort of distract them. I kind of would love it if our battle cruisers down, well, our former battle cruisers down here would uh, catch sight of Russian ships trying to move into Northeast Asia, but no luck there. The Russians did not want to fight that. I don't know what army attack or army offensive you're referring to. I mean, granted, I guess technically we could have one. 
Suppose there is a land border here, so there could be one. What is that, six minutes left of my timer? I guess we'll see. Where did we get this money just all of a sudden coming from? Not that I have a problem with it, but it is a little bit weird. Come on, Germany. I would love for you to go to war with France. That would help significantly. You would also benefit me directly as well. Because guess who has ships in the Baltics? The Germans and the Russians. Russia would have to potentially pull back some of its fleet that they have in Asia to the Baltics to prevent the Germans from being able to blockade them there. And if they don't, then the Germans will just blockade them in the Baltics and we'll just rake in the blockade points. Doesn't really matter to me which way it goes. Also, with the French having basically zero fleet in Northern Europe right now, the Germans could easily blockade the French as well if they went to war. I'm a little bit shocked they haven't. This is a perfect opportunity for Germany to go to war with Russia or to go to war with France in my opinion. It really is. They're two primary adversaries. And they don't have the worst relations with Britain, so they don't really got to worry about them too much. I I am shocked that the Kaiser is not pushing for war against France and Russia. Because they could swoop in and grab the Baltic states, uh, and potentially Norway as well. Maybe Finland if they're feeling particularly ballsy. And basically cut off Russia. And they'd be able to easily blockade the French. Now, does that do them a whole hell of a lot of good? Probably not. Um, but I'm sure there are some French colonies they wouldn't mind taking. Maybe take Middle Congo, Senegal, Madagascar, Djibouti. I would take Djibouti personally. Because that's where most of their base capacity in the Indian Ocean is. So if I was Germany, I would take that. You can now actually potentially fight the British down here if you felt so inclined. I mean, to an extent, India has a 100 base capacity, so not so much. Um, America, what's your relations with everybody? You're basically neutral with everybody, and except for Spain, who you're allied with. Also, that would mean you didn't help Spain deal with the rebels in Guantanamo Bay. Great job. Really? Uh, um, oh, Germany could also take uh, the Antilles off of France if they felt so inclined to get a Caribbean port. Um, I probably wouldn't if I was them unless I had an alliance with the U.S. Because the U.S. would have significantly more base capacity than you if you got into a fight in the Caribbean. Um, you could take the South Pacific. I'd let you take the South Pacific. I don't care for it. It has nothing I want. So you could expand, take over New Caledonia and uh, Polynesia. I don't. The reality is, there's not really any territory I care to take at this point. Um, outside of, I would love to go to war with Britain at some point when I've had an opportunity to actually build up a fleet again. Um, and take Singapore and Malaya. I would also love to go to with China to take back the territories we lost when they had their communist revolution. Uh, but, I mean, beyond just kind of finishing up taking control of Southeast Asia, 
there's really no territory I want. Most stuff that we would be doing at this point when we go to war with other countries is going to be just taking war reps. It really is. There's nothing anybody else has that I really want. I mean, do I care for the likes of Guam and uh, the Northern Marianas and the Carolina Islands? Not really. They're not important in the grand scheme of things, but I would take them if given the opportunity. Uh, same with if the game ever decides to give us an opportunity to say, oh, there's unrest in the Philippines. Somebody needs to step in and bring order. I'll take it. Do I need the Philippines? Not really. Our base capacity here is more than sufficient for our needs. Uh, the only person who beats us is China, and China doesn't have an economy to be able to field a large enough uh, navy to matter in that regard. So I, I would take the Philippines just for the sake of having the Philippines, really. Also, it has 100 base capacity, so it's actually not too bad to take. It's half as good as Hong Kong. And basically as good as taking over Vietnam. Because these are 50, 50, and 20. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and end this part here. My timer is going to go off in like three seconds. And by three seconds, I mean one second. Uh, but that's going to be it for this part. I will see you all next time where we will be continuing our third war with France and second war with Russia. Um, hopefully this war will not drag on too long because I would love to have an opportunity to try to actually focus on rebuilding, which is a little bit hard to do when we're in the middle of a war like this. Um, especially when it's one that we need to use basically every available resource, which is not the case for some other um, situations. I would love to get more Awamis out. But uh, we're probably only going to get the one Awami realistically, because that is a 1928 design. We are two years in. We got a brand new tech when it came to um, engine horsepower acquire or... Um, that had an effect on engine horsepower. I am not doing an all-forward design game. Screw you with that noise. I do not like all-forward designs. Uh, we are not doing an F center line there. Thank you very much. Um, I believe it is the A and B turrets that I can do. Huh? Oh, excuse me. That is... Uh... Excuse me, the X and B turrets. Cannot have an upper belt with uh, this scheme. Unit machinery is very important. Damn, this thing's fast. The inch gun's there. I think those really matter. 21 or 23. The reality is I think I'm just fine with doing this. AA directors, we'll kick those up to the max. Get rid of the torpedo tubes because I don't know why you put them there. Leaves us with 3,000 left to do what we want with. Maybe do 100 rounds of ammo. We could do 18-inch guns. I wouldn't. We do not have the ability to really benefit from 18-inch guns. They just have far too much range. And it's a bit early for like a proto Yamato in that regard. So I think this is probably what a future Dreadnought would look like right now. I don't think we're going to want to design it, though, right now. But I think this is roughly what we would do. Maybe a bit faster. 28 knots? I like that. 
I like that. That is actually that's technically slower than the Awami, so maybe <laughs> maybe it's not that great. Uh, what can I do to maybe get it up to at least the same speed? Is that at all possible? Um, I'm leaning towards potentially a no. Unless I do magazine box. And I would need to up the armor for it to not be a battle cruiser. Can we do a ludicrous 30 knots? We don't... Do we have diesel? Oh, yes, we do have diesel. Okay, yeah, we're doing diesel in this game. I don't know what you're thinking, recommending oil and turbine. Uh, the reality is 27 knots is fine for a 1930s dreadnought. Okay, we can do 28. We can do 28 with a 12-inch belt, diesel propulsion, unit machinery. Do I do an inclined belt? There are pros and cons to inclined belt. Uh, yeah, there's a small risk that shells are deflected into the torpedo protection system. But I think it's probably worth it, realistically. Uh, we'd also probably want to... Okay, we can't quite splurge for spacious accommodations right now. We will need those in the future, so that's something to consider. But we've got, like, 15, 20 years until that's an issue, so it's something that happens in the post-World War II era. So we've got quite a bit of time for that, I guess. So that's fine. Oh, I'll kick those up. Just 20. Leaves us one. One ton of weight remaining. What can I do to give me just a little bit extra? Uh, turret tops. We'll do three inches there. I think that works a little bit better. I'm not a big fan of just how blank this superstructure is. I'm really not. a little bit nicer but it's it's just so bland back here there's nothing happening back here yeah i'd say this is probably roughly what we'd be looking at for a future dreadnought design as of right now but it's i don't think it's worth designing right now really Now, one thing I'm going to look in here is redesigning our stuff. Lighter than air, that should be low. I don't know why we have it on medium. I thought we had changed it, but apparently not. Um, outside of loving to get quality one, and I don't recall if there's quality two. Yeah, I don't recall if there's quality two 16-inch guns. I know some of these have quality two. Like, I'm pretty sure 5-inch guns do, but I don't recall all of which ones do. Because I don't think every single gun caliber has quality two as an option. But I would love to get quality one 16-inch guns. But the reality is, outside of that, 
I don't care too much for the naval gun stuff here. I think I might actually drop that to meh. No, we'll keep it on high for now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we wanted to make the most of our advantage there. We're actually going to kick that up to high, I think. Um, amphibious operations, we're actually going to kick that down to low because we don't really benefit from any future techs for our use case. Um, so there's no real need to prioritize that in any way. It was useful in the early game when we didn't have as many places to launch invasions from, but now it doesn't really matter, and we're not really invading territory so much anymore, so I don't really benefit from it so much. Um, let's see, anything else I can kick down to low? Um, this can probably go to medium now. Fire control, I want to keep that on high. That's very important to me. Um, subdivision, eh, subdivision of damage control, I think, can stay at medium. I think that's served us just fine for the most part. AP projectiles, keep that at medium, and same with the explosive shells. Fleet tactics, I, I think we could probably get away with that on low. I don't think the stuff here matters so much for us right now when it comes to future stuff. Uh, I would game, please, for the love of God, give me five inch dual purpose and then follow it up almost immediately with twin dual purpose five inch guns. I would love that. That would be wonderful. Okay, and that was us getting dive bomb. Have we invented a dive bomber yet? Uh, no, we are two turns out from having some designs presented to us. Okay. So that's going to be for this part. I will see you all next time where we will be continuing this war, as I mentioned. Until then, goodbye and farewell.